This is lesson 2-5, two, two Reasoning in Algebra and Geometry. There's going to be a lot of properties that you're going to learn today that you're going to have to memorize. Some of them will use more than others. The first one is just called the addition property. And basically the addition property is saying that if I have two things equal, so if A is equal to B, and then I take something and I add it to A and I take the same thing and I add it to B, so look what I'm doing, I'm adding uh, C to A and I'm adding C to B, then those sums also have to be equal to each other. So the addition property says if A equals B, then A plus C equals B plus C. And I think that just makes sense. We'll be using that one sometimes throughout our proofs. The subtraction property is very similar, and that's going to be if I subtract congruent things if congruent things are subtracted from congruent things, then those differences have to be congruent. So again, if A equals B, and then I take C and I subtract C from A and I subtract C from B, then that also has to be equal to each other. Okay, so these I'll use more than I will use multiplication and division, but multiplication and division are very, very similar as well. Again, you're starting with A equals B. And this time I'm just going to multiply C to A and I'm going to multiply C to B and those will also be equal to each other. So if A equals B, then A times C equals B times C. Again, if you need to pause the video at any time, please do so. Division property, same idea. If A equals B and C does not equal zero, we need to put that stipulation in because you can never divide by C, uh, zero. So A divided by C equals B divided by C. That's the division property. Reflexive property is very, very basic, but we actually use it quite a bit. You'll see when we start to use proofs. That's just saying if something is equal to itself. So A equals A, or angle A equals angle A, so angles can be equal, the same angle is equal to itself. And I sort of remember that when you look in the mirror, you see your reflection. So the reflexive property is just something is equal to itself, and we actually use that quite a bit. Symmetric property. If A equals B, then B equals A. You're sort of just flip-flopping it and having it the other way around, and that one makes sense as well. So if A equals B, then B equals A. Transitive property you should know, but it's also very similar to substitution, and a lot of times we just use the word substitution. But the transitive property says if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So if the first thing equals the second thing and the second thing equals the third thing, then the first and the third have to be equal to each other. You're sort of just canceling out that B. Or you might want to say that you're substituting in the B. Since A equals B, I'm going to substitute B in for A. So that's why um, A equals C. And the substitution property of A equals B, then B can replace A in any expression. So try and fill out this bottom part, and then we'll do the proof together. So using the properties that are listed here, if you can come in with this done tomorrow, so if something's equal to itself, try and remember the property. Okay, so you'll, you'll do these seven problems right here. So you can pause the video and do those, and then um, start the proof that we'll do together. So what is a proof? A proof is a convincing argument using deductive reasoning. A two-column proof, we're going to do two different kinds of proof, but this is called a two-column proof. The statements are on the left, the reasons are on the right. Every statement has to have a reason as to why you are allowed to write that. In a proof, a lot of times you're given a picture, you're always given certain information to get you started, and then you're told what you need to prove. So it's sort of like a puzzle, you've got to follow like a path how am I going to get from the given to what I want to prove? So right now I know angle 1 is equal to angle 3, but I want to prove that AEC, AEC, which is bigger than angle 1, it's really angle 1 and angle 2, together, is equal to the measure of angle DEB. Well, let's follow the letters, DEB. Well, that's bigger than angle 3. It's really angle 3 and angle 2 together. Okay, so let's see what we have here. The first statement, we always, always start off with what we're given. So angle measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3. What's the reason? How do I know that that's true? Because it was given information. So the reason is just given. Very easy. Now, measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 2. What is that when something's equal to itself? That was the reflexive property. So the reason is reflexive property of equality. And you could actually just write reflexive property. Now let's look at step three. 
eventually you are actually writing these statements they're not going to be written for you but this, we're doing it this way to get used to them the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle two we already knew one and three were equal and since two equals two I'm adding two on to angle one and I'm adding two on to angle three which is actually why I need to write this reflexive property it seems kind of silly well of course something's equal to itself but I'm going to add angle 2 on to 1, and I'm going to add angle 2 on to 3, so it has to be written here twice so I get added on to each section. And what did I do? I kept on saying I'm adding, so that's the addition property of equality. Now angle 1 plus angle 2, right here, look at my picture, angle 1 plus angle 2, if I add them, that's really angle AEC. And angle 3 plus angle 2, if I add those, that's really angle DEB. So the reason for step four is the angle addition postulate that we talked about back in chapter one. The two parts added together equal the whole angle. And then, since I already know angle one and angle two equals angle three and angle two, and angle one and two equals AEC, and angle three and two equals DEB, I now know that the measure of AEC equals the measure of angle DEB, which is what I wanted to prove. You're done with the proof when the last step is what you were asked to prove. And what's the reason that I know that? I substitute it in. I already know these two are congruent right here in step three, but angle one and angle two actually equals AEC, so I'm substituting angle AEC in for one and two. I'm substituting angle DEB in for angle three and angle two. And that's our first proof. We'll do many more.